Hi, welcome back. This is the third lesson. Uh, we're going to continue talking about the radial menu, which you access by touching the C key and holding that down. We got as far as the movement, and we did a little bit with the snapping pivot mode, either manual or automatic. We'll go over this one many more times. Right now we have our rotation set on local and our movement set on local. Those tend to work really well for me. Um, if you're more used to the default mode, you can certainly do it that way. Um, but in, in some situations, you'll find that it just does not work for you. Um, I'm going to put those back on local for right now. Uh, the next thing is collision. Um, it should be kind of obvious what this does. If Right now, collisions are set to on. So in this case, I should not be able to make the block go into the other block. In other words, overlap. Um, I can if I force it to by hitting control to position it manually and then forcing it into the other block. Um, but I can't, uh, I can't do it any other way. Um, and if you notice, I changed the grid size to make that go a half a step instead of a full step down. Um, I'll go into the grid size as well. But right now with collision on, you can't, you can't force anything into anything else. Um, so I'm going to show you now, if I hit C and then I hit collisions on, I should be able to force it, well, maybe if I turn the grid off, yes, if I turn the grid off, I can force it in, or if I turn the grid on and then make the grid smaller, let's turn the grid back on and make it smaller then I can. So I can go into the other block without having manual on manual positioning on because collision is off. So it's not seeing it as colliding. It's just you can you can basically place it on top of the other block inside the other block if you wish. So that's what that does. So collision does pretty much what you would think it would do. I'm going to turn that back on for right now. I'm going to skip over these two because these are more advanced and we'll do that later. Um, flip and mirror I'm going to skip over because you won't be able to see that with a block. Basically that will flip something around. It's really useful when you're putting in a door and you want it to swing a certain way. Um, surface edit. Ooh. Okay, this will get a little confusing since we're not into the more advanced building methods yet, but I can cover it briefly. So we're going to turn this on. And what this will do is you notice on this block, the top has um, lit up with some red points. You can't manually adjust these. I'm thinking that maybe someday we will be able to do that. But what this will do is it will allow you to change the size of the upper surface. So if I hit shift and the left button, it's going to get smaller. And the down arrow make, will make the other side get smaller. And it's doing it in an increment of, um, I believe that's a quarter block because I have a quarter block grid currently selected. Uh, you can do, you can go up and down. That won't change anything. Now, the other thing that it will do is that it will, if without holding the shift key, it will move it over in, in, in the direction of the arrows. So you can create, uh, you know, uh, an interesting shaped block, your own shape. It only will um, affect one surface at a time. And I don't believe, but I'm not entirely sure, um, if you can 
turn the block over and then do other manipulations, but let's try that. First, I will have to turn off the surface edit. For surface edit mode, I'll have to turn that off. And then I will need to rotate the block. Okay, so I have it rotated. Let's say it's sitting kind of on its side now. And then if I hit surface mode on again, no, it's only going to um, do the original top side. So I, it, it's only going to affect the one side, which is kind of unfortunate because it would be cool if you could manipulate it in a different way, but you can't. Um, this this uh, does offer, I'm gonna hit backspace and I don't know what that did, but um, oh, let's turn surface mode off now. Holding C, turning this off, and then I'm gonna hit Shift Backspace. Interesting. It's not, it's not restoring it to its original shape. Okay, so then let's hit Shift Back. No? It's remembering that shape. That's really interesting. Huh. Maybe... See, I discover new things every time I play this. Um... See, I would expect that if I hit shift backspace, I would get back to a cube, but I did not. So I think what I might have to do then is go back to surface edit, turn it back on, and then uh, undo what I did by making it into a cube with that mode. Now it's back to a cube. I can turn that off. Anyway, that's why I, I really wasn't going to go into that right now, because that, that can get pretty darn complex. Um, but you can see that uh, in some instances, that would come in very useful for making different kinds of construction elements that simply don't exist otherwise. Like that might be the leg of a bridge support or something. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, actually. All right, so the next thing on our radial menu is the texture scale. This is interesting. This is, these two things were added, I think, in the last, in the last go around, and wow, they do a lot. So let's hit on texture scale. One is the default, which means it's the size that it is. We can go, um, four times, let's see what that does. So if I hit four times on the texture scale, the block is, the block is still a cube, but our texture is now four times the normal size. And actually it's kind of cool. It's made uh, each block like a half of a cinder block. Yeah. That's pretty nifty. All right, so then the, let's go and do a uh, different size. Let's go down to a quarter size. No, that's C. That's two times. So that should be half of what we norm what we have right now. Okay, those are pretty big blocks. Let's go and do um, texture scale. Let's go half size. So your blocks are half size. And it goes down to, uh, well, I guess that would be a quarter size. So even smaller blocks. And there's one more, zero. Let's see what happens when we hit this. I don't think I've ever tried that. And that is no texture. Wow, I don't know why it's that color. So basically there is no texture on that block. Wow, 
Huh. Uh, now I have not seen that before, but that's interesting. So that's what texture scale does. There is another thing that texture scale does, or texture rather. So we'll go to texture. Let's change the scale back to the default. And force texture alignment. So this is local alignment. That means that depending on what uh, what way the block is facing, the alignment should follow the, the block. So if I turn the block a little bit, and then it's it's got force local alignment. Now that the, the texture should follow the uh, rotation of the block and it does. Now if I keep the block rotated but change the alignment of the texture to either default which I think will still go the direction of the block let's test that and it does not it goes so the default is the world alignment and let's let's do another one and this time we will do world alignment and see which way it goes. Yeah, so the default is, is basically world alignment on this block. Now some blocks are different, um, but if you were building a wall and you wanted your bricks to follow the direction of your wall, then it would make sense to use the local, the local alignment on your texture. Uh, uh, it looks fine on the side, but the top looks weird. But that's what that does. Um, move precision. Okay, this, this gets really, really useful. And you use this in conjunction with the grid, and um, sometimes you can use this without the grid. So if I put a, mu a move precision of 0.01, that's a very small increment it that is the smallest increment but that is that is when you're using manual positioning so manual positioning is when you are um let's uh first of all we'll put this back into its normal position so manual positioning is when you're holding the block and you get it in kind of the place where you want it you can hit control one time. The green thing down at the bottom there said manual positioning enabled. And now if you push your arrow keys, it will move a certain amount. But see how it's moving to the grid? So if I make that grid bigger, it's gonna move in full block increments or half block or quarter block or eighth block, or 16th block, or I guess that's a, like a 32nd. Yeah, so you can get quite granular in your movements. Now that was with the grid, but if you notice, if I turn off the grid by hitting G, now, it's moving in even tinier amounts. And why is that? Because we have our manual movement set at 0 0.01. Now with the grid off, this is controlling the movement. With the grid on, uh, turn that grid back on and make it bigger. Even though we still have the movement set at 0.01, the grid is controlling our movement, so it's bigger. And I use that a lot when I'm trying to, you know, swiftly move something into position. And then I might turn the grid off and move it slowly to get it finally positioned where I want it. So that's how you can use the grid to position things more carefully. Um, and remember that if you have the grid off, um, let's turn the grid off. Let's rotate our piece by hit, we're gonna hold, because we now have it in manual positioning, the way we rotate now is to hold down control and use our arrow keys to rotate. 
Now, because we have our move, because we have our move mode as local, it should move along the axis of our piece, and it does. Now, if we enable the grid, it will still move, but it will move on the axis of our piece, but it moves in bigger increments. So see how this can get so very, very confusing. Now, I'm gonna leave you with one more bit of confusion. <laughs> um, if I turn on snapping by hitting enter, what just happened? It moved and it moved to a point of snapping. So it's, it's going to go to those points. Even though I can't see them, it's going to those points. So this is not what I expect when I hit move. This is not what I was hoping for. And if I go over here, if you remember, I put in some small blocks over here. So it's finding those, it's finding those snapping points on those blocks, but over here, these were big blocks. And let me let me let go of control right now to show you. See the all the little points? That's because these were small blocks. And look at how it's rotating depending on what I'm touching. Cuz I don't have control in, uh, selected. It it's doing weird things. Now, see this these were big blocks. Remember I made them 5 by 5. And now it only has a few points. And so that's going to confuse the heck out of you, right? So if you turn off snapping by hitting enter again, now you can move it wherever you want, but it's still adhering to the grid. If I turn the grid off, then I can move it however I want. And sometimes you just need to do that and eyeball it. And then you can hit, let's say I want it right here and I want it on this angle. And I'm going to hit control now without the grid, right? And I have that fine control selected on my move precision. I have 0.01, which is the finest control. And then I can use my, my, my arrow keys to carefully line it up. It, let's say I wanted that corner right there. Well, I got it right there. But I couldn't do that if the grid were enabled because it, it, move, it moves on a bigger. And I definitely can't do it if I have snapping enabled because it's gonna adhere only to, to certain points. So if I move this over, it's never gonna line up the way I want it to. Well, it will because I already lined it up, but you get what I'm, what I'm saying here. So on this radio, we've covered everything now but but the move uh the move the rotation and the snapping i think are probably some of the most um, confusing things when you go to actually use them uh, so hopefully that will get you a little further and the next step will be to build our wall and we can see how building a wall with blocks um, and building a, a wall using um, let's say more real world construction uh, method is different and ways that you can make your buildings look more realistic or not if that is what you want. So that's all for now and the next one will be again on um, putting all of those things what we just learned on the C menu on the radial menu into play. Okay, that's it for now. Bye. See you next time.